In this video, we will continue looking at information extraction, and we're going to focus on a couple of important techniques. We're going to look at relationship extraction, at temporal extraction, and we're going to look at how we can use relationship extraction to fill out templates. For example, we can have a template about a kind of protein and the processes it engages in and what other proteins are engaged in the process. Let's begin with relationship extraction. And here we have our good old friends, regular expressions. This is an example from the textbook. And these are all regular expressions for the relationship is a. Like gallidium is a red algae. Let's look at the second regular expression. This one looks for a noun and the word such as, and then a number of noun phrases and or a noun phrase. This regular expression would match a phrase like red algae, such as gallidium. And so from this text matching this regular expression, we could then, um, you know, ha extract this word and these two words here and know as entities and know that gallidium is a kind of red algae. So again, there are two entities in the sentence, red algae, gallidium. And from the fact that they match the regular expression, we know that the relationship between them is, is a. Uh, the fourth regular expression has a similar example, uh, noun phrase, including other noun phrases and then final noun phrase, as in common law countries, including Canada and England. From this, we can extract that England is a common law country. In the fifth one, noun phrase, especially other noun phrases, uh, this would match the sentence European countries, especially France, England, and Spain. And from there, we could extract the fact that England is a European country. So notice that what we need to do, we need to perform named entity recognition to see what are the parts of this sentence, European countries, England, and then because they match a regular expression, we can figure out what is the relationship between them, is a, or for example, another verb or any other kind of relationship that we define. We can use these types of regular expressions to then fill out a template. Let's say you're interested in trying to get attempts at racing and airfare from, you know, the text of newspapers over the years. You could have uh, an entity, which is a fair race, and the entity would have different attributes. For example, it would be an, there would be an airline that, does, that has the fare, how much they raised the fare, what the date was, and whether there were any, any other airlines that followed. And of course, going through newspapers through the years, you're going to find many of these uh, entities so that you can fill out their template and have the information that you need. The first thing you would need to do is do named entity recognition to find the different uh, components that you might be looking for, for example, money. You also need regular expressions so that there's something that matches. It has increased fares by $6, which would be an increase or a, or a race. By having a regular expression that identifies this part and by extracting this as a named entity, you would then put that information into the format of your database or knowledge base, and you would have extracted information from raw text. This is an example of a very interesting project to do this with biomedical papers. In biomedicine, sometimes people write about proteins and some of the processes. Maybe in some other paper, there will be a description of the same protein with some other process. What this project is trying to do, and I left you with the links below, is trying to read through literally millions of biomedical research papers to try to fill out databases with protein names and their processes and associated proteins so that eventually we can have all of that information together and have the knowledge of these two papers combined, hopefully creating new knowledge. The process to do this is essentially what we've been uh, doing during this week. First, the text is pre-processed by doing dependency parsing and part of speech tagging. There's a process where they use IOB tagging 
to find whether something is the beginning word of a protein or outside of a protein word. Having done this, they perform entity extraction, extracting, for example, that this is the name of a protein. They also look for something called anaphores. These are words that only have meaning in context. For example, it's, in this case, means the name of the protein here. But if there was another protein, it would mean some other thing. It is very challenging to try to figure out exactly what it means. And this is the part of the project that does that. Then they perform relationship extraction, where they try to figure out here that it is related to a process, phosphorylation, and that this protein is related to an expression to uh, another process, an expression of the protein. Once you have these entities and the relationships between them, you can begin filling out templates. For example, that a certain protein causes a certain regulation of a certain process of a different protein. So you can use regular expressions to try to fill out a template about what proteins are doing or what kind of processes they're involved in. And surprisingly, you need very few regular expressions. You need only about 32 to find out what are the correct names of the proteins and where the, um, the anaphoric elements are. And you need about 122 rules to extract what are the different events that could be going on, like phosphorylation, like regulation, and so forth. So from this, uh, from the different moving parts of the system, you would eventually get a database of facts about proteins, which you can then use to generate new knowledge about proteins from the parts that were in separate research papers. So this is how we can use regular expressions for um, relationship extraction and for template filling. One final process that we're going to look at is temporal detection which also can use, can use regular expression or classifiers. Here we have our good old, good old IOV notation. In this sentence, a fair increase initiated last week. The word last is the beginning of a temporal word. Week is the intermediate part of a temporal expression. And O is outside of a temporal expression. So. At some point, we will train some sort of classifier to help us detect whether something is a time word or not. And some of the features we can use are, of course, the shape of the word. If it has numbers in it, for example, a number, colon, and two numbers, it is probably a time word. We can use parts of speech. For example, it's very unlikely that a verb is going to be a temporal word. We can use specific tokens, for example, if the word uh, if the word before appears or the word today or tonight appears, then that is probably a temporal word. Um, by the way, I'm sorry, and we can use these features to then train any kind of classifier system that can find these words for us. This is a very challenging process for at least two reasons. The first one is that it's possible to get a lot of false positives, things that are tagged as time, but they're not really talking about time. For example, here the title of the book 1984 looks like a year, but really isn't. It's more like a proper noun. And here there's a, an album called Sunday Bloody Sunday, where these look like temporal words, but again, they're just the name of something. So these uh, shouldn't be tagged as time. Another reason why temporal detection is difficult is the time is relative. If you have words like yesterday, tomorrow, last quarter, these words don't mean anything um, outside of their context. You need to figure out if there's some sort of uh, anchor, like an absolute time, that you can link them to so that then you can figure out when exactly yesterday is. And there's processes to do that. For example, there's a kind of markup called time ML which tries to scan a document for some sort of definite, definite anchor of time. For example, uh, using a regular expression to find the date when an article was published. Once you do that, you can define an absolute anchor, like this date, 
And then whenever you find a relative time, like the word two weeks, you could specify that this is anchored on time t1, which is this one here, from which then you could calculate exactly what two weeks means. Okay, so to summarize this presentation, we've been looking at information extraction, for example, um, relationship extraction and template filling. So if you have a phrase like Samantha gets dinner at 7 p.m. for $20, we do named entity recognition to get, for example, that this is about money, this is about time, and this is about a person. And then, for example, if we have a template that's about dinner, we can have attributes like who got it and then make a regular expression that extracts the word Samantha and puts it here. How much was dinner? Get a regular expression that finds a money expression and puts it here. And of course, again, think about the things we spoke about this week. Uh, someone has to decide what are the attributes that describe dinner. And this will be true for any entity that you describe in this way. The This is just the part of what we talked about this week. This week we looked at different parts of dealing with semantics and computation and natural language processing. So when you need to perform information extraction from your text so that then you can build knowledge bases or knowledge graphs that capture the different relationships that you found. And once you have those facts about the world, you can then use them to infer new facts and create new knowledge. Um, this is aided by special databases that are, uh, that are crowdsourced or made by humans. For example, WordNet or ConceptNet. WordNet tells you what are the relationships between different words, and ConceptNet tells you things that are common sense, that are too obvious to be found in the text, and so the computer will never see them because they're never in the input. So these are some of the steps involved in dealing with the meaning, the semantics of documents in natural language processing.